uh, just a review uh, on the regular show. Show here's the question we had at the end. Uh, should, should, in the in the in the to be totally just. You believe that uh, Dick Cheney, George Bush, and the whole administration should be prosecuted for their out. acts. It's, uh, it's uh, Governor Jesse Ventura. Ventura is with us. But, uh, but you, if that is the case, then we should prosecute. Uh, we should have prosecuted Harry Truman. Should have prosecuted uh, Abraham Lincoln. Should have prosecuted uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Are you for that? They're dead. But if you talk about justice. They're dead. So if they were, would about you prosecute reality. them? To, You're giving me a you, hypothetical you up, that's I'm giving bullshit. You a, I'm, giving you a, I'm giving you a hypothetical because you're making up your Rosie O'Donnell-like scandals that says that 9-11 was an inside job. Well, why, are, why are you not allowed to ask anything about it? No, why, you're when you approach the government, to, I, I approach the government I read and everything possible. I watched you all the hearings. Not. You, you're you right. I haven't not. read. You looked at my reading list. Have you read the 9-11 report? And you think it's a piece of fiction. No, I believe everything in it. I believe. Uh, it, my government's never lied to me, have they? Let's see, where should we start? The Gulf of Tonkin incident? Now that took us into war in Vietnam. They've now admitted it was a lie. So 58,000 of my generation were killed based upon a lie. What but that, that doesn't count, does it? I what does that have to do with 9 11? That shows that we will lie to go to war. We've been doing it for years. We will continue to do it. The Gulf of Tonkin incident, did you believe that? Well, you Dude, probably weren't alive then. Um, I apologize for not being alive then. Well, uh, it won't happen again. Well, uh, so, yeah, I was I'll, alive. Okay. But 50, and I remember our president sitting on TV telling us right. our boys are floating in and the water. And because of that, you'll never believe anything. And because of that, you'll never believe anything. But they lie all the time. I, have you been in government? No, I have. All right, so that's for. So I've never why been in the NFL, have, but why, I can watch a football why, game and why, judge what's okay, going on. Why do we have the CIA embedded in all state government when their mission statement says you that they're not? You're changing the question. You, you, just, if you just say one thing. You don't think the CIA has our best interest in mind. You don't think our intelligence branch has our best I never said any of that. But that, your questions and conclusions only lead to that one statement. That you think everyone's against America, uh, no, the government's that's against not America. True. Always remember, dissension's the greatest form of patriotism. Tom Jefferson said that. Tom, you were alive then? No. Uh, You're going to insult right, me I got to go to radio. Yeah. All right, Jesse. Uh, take care. He's leaving. Jesse, I hate. I do. I do have to say that I think Brian probably has read every word from the whole 9/11 situation. He's passionate about it, as you can see. Well, I am too. But and, mm -hmm. and I agree with you that there's been covert activity over time, no doubt, where the government has not told its people every single thing that's gone on. I don't think any. They rarely do. But. But when it comes to 9-11, are you so sure? No. That, okay. No, but I ask questions, mm -hmm. and what perturbs me is that you don't get answers. Nobody wants to talk about it. This event that changed our entire history of our country, mm -hmm. why aren't we allowed to discuss it? Why aren't we allowed to ask questions? The moment you do, you get a reaction like he gave me. Mm -hmm. How dare you? How dare you question your government? So what are your questions? My, my questions are simple. I worked in demolition. I'm a former frogman, underwater demolition team. I know how to blow things up. How could the buildings fall at the rate of gravity? Basic physics tells you that that's, that can't happen. Yeah, I... And how did the cement get so pulverized just simply from falling? It was blown into dust. What mm -hmm. energy was required to pulverize all that cement so into what dust. Conclusion do you draw? I don't know, mm -hmm. but I certainly question, and yet I'm attacked when I question. You notice how if you bring up 9-11 and have any questions about it, immediately everyone attacks you over it, tells you you're crazy, calls you Rosie O'Donnell, insult you. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I ask questions? I think a lot of people, Jesse, figure, well, you know, that 9-11 report came out and it said it was those guys over there. It was those Al-Qaeda guys. So people just go, okay. They've formulated an opinion yeah. in reasoned manner, and that's what happened. Now, they can't know for sure that all of that happened per se, but, you know, you do ask a lot of questions, and that's what your book, is about. Don't Start the Revolution Without Me, is about. It's and about I, asking and, questions. And I thought in our country th that was good. And in, in this country, I thought before 9-11 it was good to ask questions. It was challenge good. authority. Challenge authority. But now, apparently, we've changed to where you're not allowed to challenge authority. You have to accept what the government tells you, keep your mouth shut, and stay in line. Well, that's not the America that I served as the military. I served because, to me, defense of free speech, popular speech, 
the First Amendment doesn't need to be defended. It's unpopular speech is why we have that amendment. Mm -hmm. so and it seems that when you question 9-11, you're asking unpopular speech today. Mm -hmm. So you would also like to question the Obama administration. It wouldn't just be the former Bush administration. Oh, I'd like to question everybody right. on it, because to me, it doesn't, what happened that day, there are so many unanswered questions, and even the, even the relatives, you saw the protests at the 9-11, and since when do you bring in witnesses that don't have to testify in open, where they're brought into closed-door rooms and allowed to testify together. Let me get your pulse on what's been happening recently, because since okay. we chatted at the Republican convention in St. Paul, sure. the economy's gone to hell, yeah. and uh, the government now basically runs the car industry and the yeah. banking industry, yeah. and I'm really interested in your interpretation of that. It's difficult. Is, are they doing the right thing? I don't know. I don't think anyone really knows. I think it's a roll of the dice. You hope they are. You hope they are. And you hope that the decision-making people are doing the right thing. Can I unequivocally tell you they are? No, I can't. But you don't like government getting involved. So no, you, I'm, so I'm very much small government. I believe government is far too expansive. I, 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 when I was governor once, I brought my whole staff together, and I asked them, I said, during lunch, I said, when we come back, I want you to tell me one thing in your life that's not government-controlled. And they couldn't. <laughs> One guy brought up sleeping, mm. and I said, no, not true. Remember, you got that tag sure. on your mattress that says you pay penalty a law if you rip it off? Well, they'd be you, harder I don't for them know, to I don't know, know exactly now. if you get arrested for ripping that thing off the mattress. I'm I got a feeling sure. if uh, I but, got a feeling uh, someplace in your history you've ripped some uh, tags off of mattresses <laughs> and pillows. Too. Maybe, but, uh, but the point is our government is so much in our lives today. I mean, even the air you breathe. No, you're absolutely and, right, and, and, and you've got to, and I love the fact that in this country, and this show in particular, we ask questions all the time that are contrary to what the government tells yeah. us. But one of the reasons I enjoy living in Mexico, uh -oh. I'm, I'm treated like an adult down there. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. You're from Mexico. How are you feeling? You Great. don't have the flu. You didn't know <laughs> me the flu. No. <laughs> and let me state this unequivocally. I feel the Mexican government has done everything feasibly possible. They shut down the schools for a week. Mm -hmm. They uh, canceled all their soccer games, which to them, that would be like us canceling baseball for a week. Well, um, uh, when I left, you had to fill out a questionnaire, and they actually did a thing where they touched your skin, and they took your temperature. And if your temperature was too high, you didn't get on the plane. That's great. So, you know, I think that they've done everything they feasibly can do. People need to understand, when there's an outbreak of 1,500 in Mexico City, you got to remember, Mexico City is twice the size of New York. Absolutely. You're talking about 15 to 20 million people there. And 1,500 is small in comparison to the amount of people that live there. Is it a dangerous situation? Yes. I would counter this. How about all these numbskulls out there that don't believe in evolution? Swine flu, there's your classic example. There's a virus that evolves and it will come back again. Mm -hmm. Once we fix this one, that virus will re-evolve. Re uh -oh. I do it now and it'll appear again. Now we're going into a whole all these other people, territory, all the, Wait, all these people say evolution, it's just a theory. You know what I answer back with, Gretchen? What? So is gravity. That's just a theory. If you don't believe it, go jump off the building and see if it's real. Yeah, we saw what happened to those ducks earlier. Uh, don't start the revolution without me, Jesse Ventura. Always a pleasure. My pleasure. All right. Always Never a dull moment, me. my friend. Absolutely. How's your blood pressure? My <laughs> blood pressure is great. I'm, you know, I'm surfing now, and that's my main thing in life. Is you to look like a surfer now. Well, my hero now is Laird Hamilton. Uh, he's, he's an attractive he's, guy. He's, I like well, him. I don't watch it, and it's not for his attractiveness. <laughs> That I like it. it's, right. it's for it's for his courage. That's why waves, I watch him and the waves he rides. He has great courage. He's All a right. man of courage. Don't check out his wife. Uh, we'll Thank be you, back tomorrow. That would be Wednesday. See you then.